Hey guys, what's going on? We're at the park, beautiful day. A lot of wind, so hopefully that doesn't uh, get in the old mic. So I'm gonna show you the uh, setup, pocket radar, uh, on, a, on a just a regular catch play day. So I like to use my iPad mini for the display. Uh, I like to use the video integration, um, but I also like to see the speed in the video. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up typically and 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't use batteries in the pocket radar. What I'll do is I have a external charger or a charging block or whatever they call these, but this one and then this one, this one I like because it sticks to like a tripod. You can put it actually like in the tripod, screw it on, and then you can put the pocket radar on top of it. Or if you have a, a dual mount, you can put this and then plug the uh, charging cable into the pocket radar like this. And you can also get super technical if you like and use multiple rubber bands to hold the portable charger. So if you do it like this, you turn this on, pocket radar automatically turns on. You can even take the batteries out. Then you can take this and just put it however you like on the tripod itself so it stays. Bada bing, bada boom. I have a very technical setup sometimes, like using this on a tripod or a dual attachment thing or whatever. I wanted to do this video specifically just to show you that it doesn't need to be super technical all the time when you set up your pocket radar. So just a simple tripod like this. Also, I will note on days like today where I'm not gonna be getting like reeds off the mound throwing down, um, I'd be getting reeds into the net. So the throw, location is going to be up a little bit, a little elevated. So that's going to be a little bit different than on the mound where it's going to be down. The biggest thing is uh, making sure that the setup of the pocket radar is four to six feet behind where your actual target is. I fell victim a lot of times early on. I'd set it up like right behind the net and I wouldn't get accurate reads. So when you when you are setting up, like you'll see here in a, in a second, make sure it's four to six feet back. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I've been doing a lot of talking. So now going to the app they have a whole new app compatibility i used it yesterday super intuitive all new features even connects to the dang watch so you can go to your watch hit pocket radar start or resume a session on your phone the new app it even shows that it's connected to an external charger one of the cooler features that that i found is the auto editing video auto edit video clip duration so five seconds before speed or two seconds after speed you can go ahead and hit the minus or plus button on that and then you can export the photos they are shooting in 1080p and you can even have an option where it says uh, optimize which is going to be a lower quality save some storage you can also just hit off on export to photos so then all the the photos and the videos will just save in the app itself and not to the camera roll add a new session super intuitive here with adding a new session baseball pitching i'm just going to be throwing there's one thing about the video that i found yesterday and that i didn't do correctly so the video's on right i don't know if you can see it that well on the camera but video's on it's showing that side and you have different options to slide and then it'll just show the speed itself on the screen. And then it'll show you the list of that current session. The thing that I, I did yesterday, I made the mistake of not hitting this bottom right record button. So this bottom right record is actually gonna save the videos instead of just having the video up while getting the reads. So you wanna hit the record button. So now you're recording, it'll say it right here. It'll also give you a count, which is super intuitive. And you can also go into your settings while on the app and change those settings that we had mentioned earlier speed range for me i don't like to get any misreads of the wind or whatever so i usually shoot it for 50 since i'm going to be warming up you also put the the pocket radar behind or in front i've had uh, more success from accurate reading standpoints like i said earlier putting it four to six feet behind the end location of that target whether it be a catcher or a net um, or if you're just long tossing so for this video example let's go ahead and put it behind so maybe you guys can get the actual visual of what that looks like all right so the video is going here pointing that way pocket radar is there all right so so this is your video right and you're recording it and then you're going to swipe it to the left this is just like the the speed uh velo board itself that you can use and then you go to the list and you'll see here by the count you'll get an actual uh camera button you can hit and use that as a viewing of your pitch speed. Back to video, and again, remember that you do have to hit the record button. So then you set that back up. 
58 miles per hour. Got to read, and then you can stop the recording by scrolling over here, and then you see another one, 58. So the list, you can actually use this in a front view. So if I wanted to just look after the throw, just put it up right here. 63 so, miles per around, hour. Boom, 63. You have it in your recent sessions, throwing into a net at the desired time, and then you have a play feature that should show you the video of the throw itself with the embedded pitch speed. Boom, boom, boom. Pocket radar, super intuitive app. Gotta love it. You wanna get your PD reads right now? All right, well, I, I'm gonna get my PD reads. Here, you guys sit. What was that? 25. That's it. Let's go. Velo off. Woo! There you go. What do you? What's your number? I, I set, set it. I, I got set it my first throw. throw. Oh, okay. What's that? So my approach is like, how can I be as uh, as like aggressive and forceful on my foot, plant foot, but as loose as possible with my hand? Is that your hover? Uh, hovering helps, okay. Okay. but it's more of like when you think about power, right? Sometimes you get like, Tight. and it's about like understanding where is it okay to be contracted and where is it like okay to be more like loose, right? So the hand is the tip of the whip. Everything else works for that. Okay. If everything's too stiff, it's not going to, the energy's not going to flow. Yeah. True. One up by one. Four? Yeah. Now we gotta turn the volume up on her. Yes, yeah, so let's get the boom box going. Um, 70. You got six. Oh, we're going down. Uh oh. That's a problem. Okay, we're good. I know. Seven? Seven. How, how, how much energy do you have left? Like, I got more. Pop a 90 before. <laughs> All right. But I can't really load well. I didn't get well. to my goal. <laughs> oh, you're there. Dude. 77 miles. Okay, now you got three away. You better go to it. Time at 101. <laughs> Dude, you're one. right there. I don't think I'll be able to do work on pitches though. I'm just sitting. 88. Not quite transferring right Come now. on! Yeah! Side bump! Woo! Ah, yeah! Let's go. That fires me up. Yeah, where's my cash? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ninety-five miles. Ninety-seven miles. Ninety-eight miles. Eight. Nine. Six. Eighty-four. Ninety-eight miles. Seventy. Eighty-seven. Ninety-eight miles. Seventy-one. Eighty-eight. Seventy-seven. Eighty-nine. Seventy-nine. 98, 88, 79. Come on! 90 yeah! Side bump! Woo! Oh! 81 miles yeah! per hour. 81 miles per hour. Yeah! Woo! Don't stay. Ah! 97 miles per hour. 